Hi, in today's video I'm going to show you how to safely invest £30,000 into a buy-to-let property. If you live anywhere below Birmingham, then you will think this is impossible because £30,000 doesn't get you that far. Up here in the north of England, it gets you very far. You can buy properties following this uh, criteria that I'm going to share with you today. And that's really important you have this criteria. Now, whether you live local to a property or not is irrelevant. In fact, it's quite dangerous if you live in the south of England anywhere, typically below Birmingham, then it really doesn't make sense in a lot of cases to invest and certainly you're going to struggle to find properties where you can invest £30,000. You need to get out of that mentality of investing locally. You're not going to be managing the property. You're going to be giving it to a letting agent in most cases. Certainly, if you wanted to become a serious landlord, you don't want to be managing the properties. So does it really matter where those properties are located? I want to share with you this criteria, this golden criteria we follow and our investors follow to safely invest £30,000. So it's following something called the yield methodology. Now let's start off with the Y for yield. Now we need to follow this strict criteria to make sure we're building a bulletproof property portfolio. Interest rates are going up. The property prices are going up everything's a bit uncertain but if you follow this criteria no matter what the market conditions are doing you'll be safe and you can safely invest that thirty thousand pounds so the yield we're looking for is typically eight to ten percent that's gross yield so how you work gross yield out very simple calculation the monthly rental income times by 12 divided by the purchase price times by 100 gives you a yield and it needs to be between 8 and 10% otherwise we discount the property if it's above 10% or below 8% we discount it very simple because you need to protect yourself against interest rate rises if you go above 10% you're typically going to pick up a problem property with problem tenants it might seem like they're super cheap but the tenant turnover is going to be big and you're going to get problems and maintenance issues but if you keep between those parameters typically we find it very very safe place to be and that's yield the next one i is for income it is imperative you get properties at net cash flow 200 pounds minimum per month because interest rates are going up you need cash flow you must have access to cash flow off your properties otherwise What's the point in doing it if you haven't got cash flow? Because once you get a good size property portfolio, these properties will produce really good income for you. So you can either leave your job or it pays for your pension. You know, it gives you that income every month. So it's really important you've got 200 pounds minimum net cash flow. Next one, E is for economy. The economy must be growing. There's no point investing in an area that's declining in population. We've got to select areas hot spots we call them that have got good future prospects because it will outperform the national average in terms of capital appreciation which is typically about 7.9 percent if you get above that and you compound it over many years this property is going to be a cash cow and you're going to be able to extract cash through refinancing tax-free cash next l is for linked there must be good transport links. You must have uh, motorways very handy to you. You must have um, uh, rail infrastructure, transportation links. There must be linked to other cities. It must be, a, you know, um, an area which has got a good prospects for uh, infrastructure, transport infrastructure, things like that. So that's what you'll be looking for: linked areas. And then D for demand. Now it's essential you get the right property. Now the, what we find in a lot of the hotspots we invest in, again you don't want problematic properties where there's going to be tenants leaving every 12, 24 months. It means you turn into a liability when they become empty because you're still paying a mortgage, council tax and so on. So we find the best properties with the highest demand are two bedroom houses plus. So two, three bedroom uh, semis as well they work really well so 
two bed houses, very good demand in most of the hotspots that we invest in. So if you follow those golden rules, you'll make sure you safely build a portfolio. So let's head over to Rightmove now, have a look at some property. I'm going to show you some property we'd invest in and uh, the types of properties we're looking for. We're on Rightmove, let's have a look at some properties that meet that yield criteria we've just discussed. Now I've got an area in mind which a lot of our investors are investing in. We're getting a lot of foreign investment. There's some really big government-backed contracts in the area and it's definitely on our radar as a hotspot. The area is Baron Finesse in the northwest. If you remember, I've talked about this in a previous video. So let me show you some properties that meet the criteria and what we're looking for. Price range, when I look for, put a minimum of 50,000 and a maximum of say 120, because that will guarantee our eight to 10% gross yield. We know the market rents in this area really well. So I know that they're the maximum prices you can pay and the minimum prices you'd really want uh, to, to make sure you get a hassle-free investment. Number of bedrooms, you want minimum of two bedrooms. And remember, we want houses only, not flats. Automatically, it's filtered um, and uh, starts with the highest price. So we're gonna start with the lowest price properties. It's given us 96 results. And we're gonna have a look. You always get a featured property at the top. Now a little tip for you, what we don't want is props that need big refurbishments. It's just not worth it in this market we're in because building materials are through the roof, labor costs are through the roof. You don't need that added cost. And typically, if you get one that's done up, you can actually negotiate a bit on price and it actually works out in your favor to get something that's already done because it's gonna let out straight away rather than having to wait for the builders to come in and, uh, and do the work. So you wanna avoid auction properties or properties. So this one's offers in excess. So just be careful because that's, typically they do that to draw you in, um, but they want more money for those properties. Now we want ones that don't need too much work, ones that really just want decorating at, at, you know, at worst. Um, so we're not having to mess around with big re refurb. So this one looks quite good. Let's have a look at this one. This one is two bedroom terrace. It's on Derry Street. And we've got some software installed, which you can probably see here. This is called Patma. This is a free browser extension and it gives you extra information about properties. You'll see here, this was first listed at 65, so it's been reduced. And then we've also got another piece of software, which will pop up in a minute. Which you can see on the right hand side here, it's just loading up. And while that's loading, we will look at this uh, this property in a bit more detail. So there's a floor plan. Uh, let's have a look at the photos. Typical terrace, on street parking. Decorated. You see it looks like there could be a damp patch there. Let's just have a quick look, zoom in. So that I'd want inspecting and looking at. If there is a damp issue, you can potentially use it as leverage, as a negotiation point. Damp or condensation can be misdiagnosed, so be really careful. We send damp surveyors out to properties where you think there's got a damp issue. Um, and it's actually really useful to do that because they send you a detailed report on how to fix it. You don't have to share this with the seller. You can keep it privately and you can assess and, and try and negotiate a really good deal. So, uh, because damp isn't always damp. It, 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 you know, it's, it's misdiagnosed sometimes. People assume everything's rising damp. In some cases, a lot of condensation issues because tenants aren't ventilated the properties or, you know, these old properties are quite poor in terms of energy efficiency. So always have a look at the properties. Don't discount them if you see a bit of damp. Use it as a potential leverage point to negotiate a better price. We want to look at the main areas which can cost money, which is a kitchen and bathroom. So this one, we wouldn't touch because it just needs, that's just not acceptable in our, in our view because of the, the work that'd be required. So let's have a look at another property. Right, let's have a look at this one on Robert Street. It's up for 60,000, two bedroom. Let's have a look at the photos. 
So the software that's loading up on the right hand side, it's called Property Data. It's a free pl plugin, just like Patma, and it gives you extra information, price per square foot in an area, really useful information. Take it with a pinch of salt. It's not 100% accurate. It's an AVM, it's automated, but on terrace properties in this area, it's around about accurate. So, uh, but, so but just be careful uh, not to go off that as sort of gospel. It's um, it's just a benchmark really to work off. So let's look at the photos. So the, the bathroom looks in good condition. Couldn't see any of the kitchen. Just see a little glimpse of it there. So the units, let's have a zoom in. The units, so it looks, looks in good condition. So that would definitely go down as one on our radar to uh, to appraise and we we obviously got further checks we'd need to do on that property to make sure it meets our criteria but so far that property meets the criteria now let's work out what the yield would be on this property so this is two bedroom so we know we could get around about 450 per month so 450 a month times 12 divided by 60,000 which is the purchase price times by 100 gives us a 9% gross yield. So that's within the eight to 10% parameters that would get the thumbs up and that would go on to the next stage of due diligence. You can also check the EPCs as well. That's an EPC of a C. So again, that's another criteria which just passed. If it's got a C or above, the up and coming changes you may or may not be aware of means that properties in the next few years have to have a C energy rating or above and some mortgage lenders are actually offering better mortgage products now for properties that are C or above so this property really meets a lot of those criterias that we look for and that property needs very little work and would rent out very very quickly so that's just a quick look at some of the properties in one of our hotspots you don't want to go too highly priced on two beds. If you get semi-detached properties, you can command higher rents. You want to obviously avoid things like park homes because they just depreciate in value typically. They're also restrictive and they're usually leasehold as well. Now some of the bigger properties, if you look for three, four bedroom properties plus, it's sometimes good to have those in your portfolio because they lend themselves to other strategies. You could potentially do mini HMOs and make more cash flow, or you could do a single let, but charge a higher rent than you could on say a two bedroom terrace. And also typically the semi-detached properties usually increase higher by percentage per annum than a terrace property, certainly more than flats, depending on the area. And I will say that because if it's city centre, say Manchester or certain cities around the UK, some of those properties are outperforming some of the national average at the moment. But from a long term perspective, and certainly with some of the attributes of Barrow and Finesse with the big government contracts, this area is just a hot spot and massive tenant demand. We were speaking to a local agent recently, they said that properties are just flying off the off the shelf as soon as they come in for rent they're just going very very quickly they can't get enough and it's pushing up the rents as well so you're actually getting more cash flow for these properties we're also working with some social housing contracts as well so in some cases some of our investors were able to get them long term maybe five year up to ten year contracts on the properties where all the repairs are taken care of you typically don't need a letting agent either so it improves your cash flow because these social housing providers do everything. They pay you the rent like clockwork, typically by standing order every month and all the repairs are taken care of. So you don't really need a letting agency in that case. So those are really good contracts in today's climate because if you're concerned that tenants, some tenants might not be able to afford some of the energy increases, whereas if you put a social housing contract on it, you know you're going to get your rent every month because it's a government-backed contract in a lot of cases so these are just some of the ideas and some of the properties our investors are buying